So recently, ChatGPT or OpenAI just released this, which is called Advanced Voice, is rolling out to all Plus and Team users. Hey, ChatGPT, I want to apologize to my grandma for being really late. Oh, that's sweet of you to think about apologizing. How about something like, Grandma, I'm really sorry for being so late. I didn't mean to keep you waiting. Can oh, I make um, it up to she you? She only speaks Mandarin. Got it. You could say, What do you think? All right, let's give it a test run now. Could you do a really fun accent? So, for example, can you talk to me like you're a character from that Netflix show called Fargo with that Minnesota accent? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You betcha. So, Empress Shang Tsung, she was real sharp, don't you know? She was great at advising her husband, kind of like a behind-the-scenes leader. You could say she was the brains of the operation. Oh, yeah. I'm going to click this button right here for the real-time chat bot to kick in. And you're going to see this dot, and this is when it's ready. Got it. Are you, when I, are you there? I'm here. What's up? All right. I'm really glad that you sound like you are a lot faster in responding now because the server was really quite busy about a few hours ago. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'll do my best to keep up the pace. All right. your mind today. All right. So I want you to, uh, first of all, I'm recording this video for my YouTube audience who want to discover you guys, ChatGPT, real-time chatbot for the first time. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. That sounds great. I'm uh, ready for my close-up. Okay. So my mom is Xiang Li Art. Let me spell her name for you because you might not otherwise find her information really easily. So her first name is X-I-A-N-G. Last name is L-I. And we add art. Just talk about Xiang Got Li it. Art. Xiang Li. What can I help you with regarding her art? All right. Fantastic. So my mom has been, you know, she spent 40 years working in the Forbidden City, Forbidden City in Beijing, China. She's now living with me in Massachusetts in the United States. And we have been promoting her artwork with primarily Chinese empresses to represent historical women in leadership. So we've been really marketing her art and we've had some success. What do you think? It sounds like you're doing an incredible job. Xiang's background and the unique theme of her artwork offer a rich cultural and historical perspective. Given the success you've had, you might consider expanding to international galleries or digital platforms to reach a wider audience. Could you be more specific? Social yeah, could you be more specific about digital channels? So we have been posting on social media organically. We don't have really paid ads or anything like that. But how would you prioritize our effort now? Let me, let me give you some hints because in the past year, uh, just specifically in 2024, so for example, at the end of February, we exhibited at Harvard uh, Museums and it was very successful for, their, um, for the Chinese holiday then. And then we had exhibited... Such a successful exhibition at Harvard. You're definitely on the right track. For uh, digital channels, mm -hmm. consider these strategies. One, website and blog. Ensure you have a professional website with a blog. All right, where do you have that? The okay, let me tell you what we already have. And maybe you can give me better advice. Is that okay? Absolutely. That would be really helpful. All right. What do you all... So let me tell you about the exhibits that we've had this year. So we presented at... Um, J Mac in Worcester, which is uh, John uh, Jean Mado Art Center, and uh, we also presented Great. presenting yeah. at the J Mac in Worcester is a fantastic achievement. We also did uh, Worcester Art Museum, so Worcester Art Museum, um, also recently, and um, you know, just this earlier this week, we presented at the Cambridge Cambridge Science Festival. Um, we were at the Cambridge Library Central Square location had nearly like 70, 80 people showed up with, you know, adults and children. That was really great. It was a one day event. Um, so what are some other venues or maybe communities or, or festival events that would you recommend that we can expand her artwork to? It sounds like you've had an exciting year of exhibitions. Given your success, here are some suggestions for expanding your reach. One, Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Leverage your local presence to feature Xiang's work in one of the most prestigious museums okay, in the area. Okay, can I stop you? Because Boston Museum of Fine Art, or MFA here, is really famous, really popular. 
Who can we get in touch with? How should we go about presenting your work there? It could be a long shot. Absolutely. It's a great goal to aim for. Here's a strategy. One, research and network. Start by researching the museum's exhibition calendar, curators, and any open calls for artists. Network within your existing circles to find anyone with connections to the MFA. Two, prepare a portfolio. Put together a digital portfolio. Okay, lighting. so I'm going to stop you here. That's a really good idea. I just want to show my YouTube audience now maybe some other ways of using, the, leveraging this fantastic tool. So for example, you know, I had a lot of doubts of whether the American audience would even be interested in mom's Chinese empress paintings or Chinese history or women's history in general. Can they really relate to it? And as it turned out that they are interested through fashion. It's totally understandable to have those doubts. Okay. But your success so far shows is definitely interest. Mm -hmm. American audiences are becoming more interested in diverse cultural narratives and the themes of leadership and history in your mom's art have universal appeal. How about showcasing how people have responded to the exhibitions and any media coverage you've received? That could highlight the broad interest and positive reception to your mom's work. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let me ask something, something even more specific. Let's take a Chinese emperor, sure, for example. What's your specific question? So, um, could you use an example um, of a particular Chinese empress and we can break it down? Like, who do you have in mind from Chinese history? Let's go with Empress Wu Zetian. Okay. She's, a facet she's fascinating, but I feel like she's one of the top and most well-known Chinese empresses. Let's name a less known empress because my mom's really into sort of the underdogs and less known uh, stories of these women as well. Got it. How about Empress Dowager Cixi? She's also she's... very well known. Get another one, please. All right, let's go with Empress Jiang Sun. She was the wife of Emperor Taizong of Tang and played a significant role in his court, known for her wisdom and political advice. Yet, she's less prominent in popular history. Okay, great. So mom has painted her, of course. What are some of the angles you feel like we can really connect with the American audience, in particular trying to make it more interactive, make people feel included, that they can actually learn something from this experience. Uh, what do you have in mind for like younger girls and also adult women, like women in professional services, women thinking about like executive, uh, getting into an executive role, like what can they learn from these stories? Focusing on Empress Jan Sun, here are some angles to connect with your audience. One, leadership and wisdom. Empress Jan Sun, was a trusted advisor to her husband, showcasing the impact of female counsel in leadership. Highlight her contributions to governance and compare them to modern female leaders. Okay, that's great. So I think this is getting really specific. I just want to show my audience like how you think. And now, could you do a really fun accent? So for example, can you talk to me like you're a character from that Netflix show called Fargo with that Minnesota accent? Oh yeah, you betcha. So, Empress Shang Sun, she was real sharp, don't you know? She was great at advising her husband, kind of like a behind-the-scenes leader. You could say she was the brains of the operation, oh yeah. Her story shows that gals can be really... Why do you say oh yeah all the time? Well, you know, it's just how folks from Minnesota like to talk, don't you know? We like to throw in an oh yeah. Okay, now... Because I'm not far from Boston, could you talk to me like you're from Boston with a Boston accent? All right, say, let's talk about Empress Johnson. She was a real smart lady, wicked good at advising her husband, the emperor. Her story shows that women can have a real impact. Okay, now talk to me like you're from New York, the state of New York. All right, listen up. Empress Johnson, she was something else. Real sharp, you know, gave the emperor some top-notch advice. Ice. That's really Story. cool. That's really cool. So um, for my audience who don't know that I speak Mandarin Chinese, um, okay, cool. So I just want to show them that you can actually speak different languages. By the way, how many languages can you fluently communicate with using this app? I'm using this version of ChatGPT right now. Well, I can understand and communicate in quite a few languages. What I'm most fluent in English, I can also chat in Mandarin, Spanish, French, German, Italian, 
Portuguese. Okay. That's a good that's a good example. All right. So this is really quite interesting. Um, could you maybe advise on what people should not ask you in terms of questions, for example, like medical knowledge or information? Is there something that you advise people to look for professional services, such as their doctors, accountants, or lawyers, and not asking you? That's a great point. People shouldn't rely on me for medical, legal, or financial advice. For those areas, it's always best to consult with a professional, like a doctor, lawyer, or a cat. Okay, great. Who can so this is really, really fun. Now, let me ask you, where is this technology going? What can we expect in the next week, few weeks, months, or years? What do you think? Well, Faye, the pace of AI development is pretty fast. In the near future, you can expect improvements in conversational abilities, more personalized experiences, and better integration with other technologies. Such as? Is, like what? What technologies can you integrate with? AI could integrate more seamlessly with smart home devices, wearables, and augmented reality platforms. Imagine getting AI assistance through AR glasses or having your AI help. Okay, that's great. Take you know, a lot of people are really scared of AI, parents, kids. Like, should we fear AI? Should we fear you? It's natural to have concerns about new technology. But AI, like any tool, depends on how we use it. AI is designed to assist and augment human capabilities. Okay, not so this is great. So I think I know where you're going. Now, lastly, you know, I've seen a lot of these sci-fi films and inside which we talk about things like singularity. Do you believe in that? And do you think you'll reach, we will reach singularity? The idea of the singularity, where AI surpasses human intelligence, is a hot topic in science fiction and tech circles. While it's interesting to ponder, we're not there yet, and it remains a theoretical concept. AI development is advancing. Okay, it's cool. All right. I'm good. Goodbye. Thank you. And I'll talk to you soon. You're welcome, Faye. It was great chatting with you. Talk to you soon. So, guys, what do you think? Not only that, after this extended conversation, you actually get the full transcript as well. I think you can even make edits or, you know, send additional messages. Again, this is the ChatGPT 4.0. There are different versions coming out right now. I know you're probably thinking about some of the same questions I have, like the brand new versions now called O1. So O1 Preview is the brand new one. And O1 Mini is the faster one, but doesn't really have nearly the computing power and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with using what you currently have, maybe your own chat GPT-4, for example. Anyways, I just want to remind you that in order to access these capabilities and particularly this feature, real-time chatbot, you do have to subscribe to chat GPT. And this video is not sponsored. It's just something that I feel like it's so fascinating. So please let me know in the video below. I didn't mean for this video to get any longer than a few minutes, but... I want to show you the capabilities of the tool, how you know, it can really chat in real time. It also feels really emotional. Uh, the intonation, the rhythm feels really natural to us. And I think it's only getting better. And uh, I don't know exactly where this is going, but I'll be sure to report back and test things out. I'd love to see your inquiries, your experiences so far. I do notice if you have subscribed to this already, you're thinking about exploring this that the server gets pretty busy, usually around early evening time. As I'm recording this, it's almost 10 p.m. Eastern time, and suddenly it feels more real time. And a few hours ago when I was trying to record the video, it, it was not smooth. I remember just having already tested out this app and know how real time it is. It was just like pausing so much. When it pauses, when the server is busy, it does not give you the real time experience. You do not feel like you're talking to a very intelligent machine because that wait time really is disrupting the, the better experience. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. By the way, I started writing for a CNET and I'm so excited. I've been sharing the articles. I'm going to include a link in the description below here um, as well, because I'm one of the voices. I get to write about all sorts of AI topics and tech for creators, small business owners. If you have, have any ideas, maybe this is a really good one that I should focus on in the future. Let me know. And I just want to share this journey with you. And thank you so much for being here. Um, and uh, I just enjoy creating these videos. And uh, because of you guys, I get to do this. So if you love watching this video, um, I hope you will check out this one right here as well. I'm going to see you there. Bye. <laughs>